Welcome to the Innovation Lab webinar series. Our mission is to help your organization use communication strategies to advance your goals in your community. By using a few simple media strategies and some helpful tips, we make your community work easier and more effective. I'm Andalusia Nall, and today we're going to be discussing story banking. Let's get started. I know you're probably thinking story banking, what on earth does that mean? And story banking is basically exactly what it sounds like, a bank where you are depositing your stories. So we got to start with a good question, thinking what do we want to ask people? What are the stories we want to tell? Um, a target, who do we want to listen to our stories or view our stories? And then combine that with simple technology that's cheap and easy to use. And we got stories that we could deposit in our story bank. These days, there's lots of technology that's really accessible, easy to use, and affordable, and it allows us to capture stories and then bank them. And how can we tell these stories? We could tell them through audio, through using microphones, recording our stories, telling them on radio stations. We could tell them in story circles where people are all sharing their stories and we're recording them while they share. We could also tell them through video um, with using cheap technology like flip video cameras or lots of cell phones these days can record videos and also telling them through photos. And we could also write our stories and blog our stories and post them on the internet. So how do we build the story bank? A story bank is simply a place. It could be on the internet, online, or offline where you have gathered and stored a group of stories about whatever topic interests you and your community and your organization. So one thing that's really important about a story bank is that you want to collect these stories before you're going to need them. So right now, after you uh, listen to this webinar, you're going to be so inspired and go and start your story bank. One reason that it's really important to collect these stories now is because that you might need them for a certain campaign that you're launching and it's really time sensitive and you, once you're launching this campaign, won't have the time to go out and collect all those stories. But perhaps before you've launched them, you already have them. Or say you want to respond to something urgent. Say there's a cold slurry spill in your area and you want to show what devastating environmental effects it's having, but yet you don't have any pictures of what that area looked like before the spill. So that's why you want these story banks. So you're collecting those images and those stories before they're really pressing and before you really need them. So let's see, a story bank, you know, we talked about there's all different kinds of media. So as we said, it could be video, audio, image, or text, but really it should be manageable. You don't want to be collecting a million videos and hours and hours of footage that you might not have the time to edit. Or say you're taking many, many different photos and then you just upload all of them and there's too many to be useful and there's too many that anyone wants to view. So really it's important to think about what's manageable to you and also what's manageable to the people that will be viewing their stories. And also think about that these stories have to be ready to share. You don't want to be recording stories and then having to think about how you're going to edit them and how you're going to change them. And really the stories that people are sharing should be ready to go. Using your knowledge of your community and who to talk to is one of your greatest assets. You talk to people all the time. You know who's a good storyteller and they know other people who are good storytellers. So you could go start asking around and interviewing the storytellers and they'll recommend other storytellers. And also it's really great to have humor and local color. You know, think about what you like to watch online and then think all the other people that are going to be viewing your videos may have similar opinions to you. So what you find funny, they'll find funny. What you find interesting, they might find interesting. And then think about what is that story that reaches out to people that really touches their hearts. Look for that warm, fuzzy kitten in your work and record it. Here we're going to go over a story bank in Appalachia that was using photos. So Zach Pence um, was a communications director at the University of Kentucky's Appalachian Center. And he was really tired of the people and the towns of Appalachia being portrayed in squalor. So he thought, what about having a photo contest? You know, having a low cost, fun, interesting project. And it could both generate publicity for the University of Kentucky's Appalachian Center and also really help out the community in shifting the image that people had of Appalachia. So he created a photo contest and he called it Re-Imaging Appalachia. He sent out press releases to local newspapers all over the region. He posted announcements on the web and he asked contestants 
to shoot non-stereotypical photos of the region that would help redefine Appalachia to outsiders. So once this was happening, it also got a lot of good press. And one thing that Pence said when he was talking to the press, he said, we blame the media for producing all these horrible images of Appalachia, but some of the responsibility for changing these stereotypes rest with the region's people. And this was a little push to do that. So that's really talking about with your stories that you're changing and shifting the narrative. So it got a lot of good press, but also he wanted to share these photos with the community. So he set up a photo exhibit and share that media with the public so that the photos were on display for people to see. You know, you can also put, say, those photos online and they're being viewed by a public, but then you could also have a face-to-face offline where people are seeing them in a gallery. And you could think about that if you're creating videos, you might want to be uploading them to YouTube, but at the same time, you might want to organize a video screening where people would come and watch those videos together. Now we're going to talk about something that has taken this country by storm over the past few months, Occupy Wall Street. And so Occupy Wall Street, you know, it originally started just with a few hundred people occupying a plaza in New York City, but really has created a narrative about poverty and inequality and corporate greed in this country that has spread and has Occupy encampments have popped up in over hundreds of cities and also even across the world with solidarity actions and other encampments. But really, the important part about Occupy Wall Street for what we're talking about here is story banking is how Occupy Wall Street protesters and sympathizers and people that are participating in in the movement in whatever fashion are really reframing the debate and getting these stories out there. And one of the ways that a lot of these stories has have gotten out there is through a blog that's called We Are the 99%. It's a Tumblr blog where it's really simple for people to just post their photos and their stories. And thousands of people have done it. Um, and so according to the blog, it says we are the 99%. We are getting kicked out of our homes. We are forced to choose between groceries and rent. We are the 99%. They encourage you to record your own story and talk about what is it that you feel that you're the 99% and what is it in your life that's making it difficult for you to live, you know? So here we see a girl and she's talking about um, how she works numerous jobs and can't afford a car and can't afford gasoline, you know, and people read this story and they really identify with it. They think, oh, exactly what's happening to that woman is what's happening to me. So one thing is that, you know, thousands of people have seen this blog, but it's also kind of had a trickle up uh, fact of just the stories that are on this blog have also really reached the mainstream press and not just the mainstream press, but also the elections. So here's just a summary of some articles that have come out really showing how the Occupy Wall Street protests are impacting the U.S. election and even Obama's State of the Union address. Earlier, I just mentioned that audio is also a really powerful way to tell your story. And one really simple way is to use Skype, a computer program that many people use to call their loved ones. But Skype also has recording capabilities and you could set up a Skype hotline. You could even get a 1-800 phone number and then people could call 24 hours a day and leave stories. So you could have a certain prompt asking people to comment or leave stories and you can download those stories and edit them and you can have a listening party and share them. You can put that audio up on your website. You could share it through social networks. And another way to document those stories is the flip camera, the easy, affordable video camera that's easy to use. And you can record stories and then it's free. You could upload them to YouTube and then also share them through your website, share them through social networks. And also to supplement your online presence, you could have in-person events, in-person video screenings, in-person video circles. So now we're just going to go over um, a few of the tips of creating your story bank. You know, it's really your knowledge of your community is your main asset. And make sure that when you're collecting your content, that you're not collecting too much, that it's manageable, that you're going to be able to edit it, that you're going to be able to upload it, that you're going to be able to share it. And also keep in mind, keep it funny, keep it interesting, humor, local color, and really think about what you like to watch and what others might want to watch. And remember, look for that warm, fuzzy kitten in your work and record it. And also, really importantly, a story bank is just that. It's a bank of stories. So you want to start collecting those stories now so that when you need them, you will have them. 
Thanks for listening to the latest edition of the Innovations Lab webinar on story banking.